Hello everyone and welcome back to Milo Farms. Well, we had a little bit of a problem here on this RX-1 on one of the last rides. One of the wheels in the back on the rear axle finally gave it up. Um, this is a 2003 model, so we did pretty well on it, but it looked like the bearing just finally gave up and the wheel came off. So, down here on the back of this track, you can see in this particular case we have four wheels across the back. Originally, they only had three, and I couldn't tell you which one is which that it didn't have of these two center ones. But a few years back, I put on the fourth wheel kit, which changes a couple of these spacers, gives you an extra wheel. And the benefit of that is it kind of spreads the weight out across the back on the track. And in particular, if you have a failure of one of these outside wheels, it keeps the track from getting damaged against the back of these pieces of aluminum here. So as you can see, one of these interior wheels broke. We were able to drive it back home, no problems at all. The weight was carried on this wheel over here, and it was just fine. But on the other hand, had it been one of the outer wheels that broke, you would have been in good shape, and it still would have carried it on the inner wheels. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace that wheel today. We've got the new Yamaha replacement right here, and so we'll get started on that process. First thing I've done is put it up on this same lift that I use uh, tied up to the ceiling and I've got it sitting with no pressure on it but the cables are all tight and everything's ready to go so if we need to lift it up to position it or whatnot we can. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen the tension on the track and you're going to do that in the back here. You can see in that track window there's a nut and the same thing on the right hand side there's another one. So we're going to loosen those and per my last uh, information written down they should be tightened five turns on this particular machine so we'll loosen those five turns and then we'll go ahead and loosen the other tensioners or the other adjustments that hold the track rear axle tight now we're going to go down to these bolts on each side of the rear wheels and we're going to loosen the shaft that goes all the way across and we're going to take off the nut on the left side and then that's going to release the tension on the track that we just loosened in the back. So the track will start to sag and that axle will move forward a half inch or so. Okay, right, so we got that nut off and the track is loosened as much as it can be. The adjuster looks like it slid forward, not quite all the way, but most of the way at least. So first thing we're going to do is start on the left side. We're going to take this wheel off and we're going to try to keep this all in order when we get each one of these off you can see here this wheel starting to get some cracks in it as well so it's starting to get close but having those redundant wheels if this one does break it's not going to hurt anything on the trail so it's important to keep these all in order when they come off so i'm just going to go ahead right here and just make a line of all the different pieces as they come off had the wheel that broke been the one on the side that we're on right now it would have been a lot easier but unfortunately it was the one on the back side so we're going to start with taking the next pieces off here. You're going to have this bushing, and then you're going to have this washer, and then that brings us to the rail that holds the track. And you can see there's the adjuster in the back, and then you can also see behind here, there's a washer. And what I had to go ahead and do is on the tip of the shaft using a rubber mallet, just lightly tapped it to get the shaft to move and slide over towards the right a little bit. So we'll keep pushing that shaft in until we get back far enough that we can take the next pieces off. On the other side right there, you're gonna see there's a washer, and then that brown colored part is actually the adjuster. Sometimes you have to take that out, sometimes you don't. We'll just see what we do when we get to that point. Once you get that washer out, that'll give you a little bit more space and then you can keep pulling and try to get the axle out and then you're going to try to get the next spacer, the aluminum piece there, and the next wheel. And that'll give you a little more working room. So you can see here's our parts coming out so far. Where the socket is sitting, that is the rail for the track that it's supported on. Then we're also getting in here to where we're starting to find broken things that came off of the old wheel. So we'll keep going. And you can see right there the next piece that's going to come off is going to be that aluminum shaft the big bushing right here, this piece, and then we'll take the wheel and its remnants off and put the new one on. So there's the axle out and took this as an opportunity to clean everything up, wipe it down with some lubricant, make sure everything was free and in good shape. 
Now we're going to go ahead and start the assembly process again. And the important part when doing that is to make sure you get all the pieces in there. So we're going to start with the wheel on the right side, the little spacer, and the washer. Then that's going to go in here, and you can see the adjuster. And on some machines, I found these adjusters have a little bit of an angle to them. I can't tell on this RX-1. It looks like they're the same. So you want to have that up there, and then you're going to have the washer in between the rail and this adjuster. Then you'll go ahead and slide the axle through. So here's our old wheel that we took off, and here's the nice new wheel right here. These bearings are replaceable, and they are also replaceable in the old wheel, but I figured for the price it's just not worth messing around with it because the old one was always already showing some age on the rubber as well. So we'll go ahead and put this wheel in next. So there we've got the new wheel in, and also you want to make sure you have that in, the, in between the guide nubs there on the trail, the track, excuse me, not the trail. Make sure you have that in between the guide nubs on the track. And then we've got the spacer that goes across the middle. And then we're gonna put the next wheel on on this side. Okay, there we go. It's all back together throughout the middle there. The hardest part of the whole thing is getting it lined up back through this last hole and then getting that washer on. Usually what I can do is use a screwdriver and pry on it a little bit and get that to make uh, room to fit that shaft through and also to have the washer in there. So once it's through, it's pretty easy from here. Put the washer, spacer, wheel, and nut on. So I'll do those next. Hey, right, we got that back on. We'll go ahead and tighten uh, the nut all the way down and then back it off a turn or two to make our adjustments. So everything's back together. We've gone back to these adjusters in the back here. Tighten these back up so they're just perfectly flush with that bolt sticking through on the head of that nut. We've done that on both sides. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten them up the five turns that we did when we took them off. So what I use is I use this flex handle here and I'll put this socket on it right here and then that way I can use the flex handle to count how many revolutions I do when I tighten these up. So I'll put it in here like this, note the position pointing straight down, and then I'll take it five turns and do that on both sides. So there it is, tightened up five turns. What I always like to look, look at is the bumps on the back of the track are right about where the bottom of the Hyfax is, or just a hair below that when it's suspended in the air. Yamaha will tell you that's a little bit too loose, but you can kind of find a middle ground between too tight that you lose horsepower and have extra resistance, or too loose that you start ratcheting on the drivers. So I found that that works pretty well right there, and in my case it happens to be five turns of tension on that uh, adjustment. So we'll go ahead and tighten this all up, and that'll finish up this project. So hope everybody enjoyed the video. Remember you can't finish a project without getting started.